If the central banks intervene in the markets, the expectation is that this is forever. There was never any indication that this could be stopped, but the admission was always that it's needed right now, so let's worry about that stuff later. QE is unsustainable and its behavior is erratic and impossible to control. This was a lesson these countries didn't need to learn because we've seen the effects throughout history. But of course, those who dig deep into the information know why central banks would still persist full speed ahead. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at what happened in the markets, we're going to talk about the trade deal, I'm going to show you what's going on and ask the question, did the Fed and the other central banks break the markets? I also want to talk about economic factors, going to have some charts for you, going to have some articles. As always, let's get into it right away. Let's begin with a little bit of humor. Now, every single day we see the same bits of information information coming out. One day we have trade optimism, the next day it's looking terrible. Now ultimately what we've had over the past year or two is that there's been hope. Hope that a trade deal would get done. I've seen many many reports that suggest there needs to be a trade deal therefore it's gonna happen and I'm talking about high level individuals, I'm talking about people in the investing and whole world, the financial world that are actually putting this information out as if it's a fact where you know they have to get it done therefore we're going to price that in to me that's crazy we have had absolutely no positivity coming out of the trade deal other than the rhetoric other than the garbage that we've seen out there and it is unlikely that they are able to agree on the big issues now can they get china to agree on agriculture sure but why is china going to buy agriculture in such enormous amount 50 billion dollars when if they can get a better trading partner one that is actually going to strengthen their ties long term why in the world are they going to go this route maybe they don't want to do 50 billion i'm not even sure where that number came out simply because we don't have anything on paper at this point but ultimately today we see this fantastic information and as always people familiar with the talks that's the one they use this time around not actual people but just people familiar with the talks. Well, it could have been my barber. It could have been somebody down the street. It could have been the paper delivery boy. But ultimately what we have here is nothing more of the same. Every single day we're seeing this garbage. Now it might be a high level source. It might be somebody important. But until we get something on paper, my goodness, why in the world do they keep putting this out? Well, we have a good idea as to why, but it's just terrible. Absolutely absolutely terrible when I see people that actually spit it out as if it's real. Bull markets often end with a euphoric rally called a blow off top. We may have just had one. Now this here is what they say in CNBC. I'm not agreeing with this and what they present to you, but I wanted to show it to you because it's just interesting. The Dow was up 10.5% over the course of just 74 trading days from mid-August to late November. That kind of rally is similar to the ones that ended previous bull markets. That's interesting to me because when you look at this and see where the charts have gone, I mean, it's crazy. It's just up and up and up and it doesn't ever seem to be coming down other than a few little blips along the way. Now, what has changed? Obviously, the central banks have gone into easing mode. You could see this here historically big changes as we look through this. There's a big, big difference in between the particularly the, the second half of 2019 and the first half of 2019. But compare that regardless overall 2019 to 2018. Big, big difference. There's no doubt about it. Now what we're seeing here in this chart, I know the font is pretty small. This is 1928 and it's just showing you the blow offs from selected Dow Jones bull markets throughout this period of time. And if you look, you will see 1929 happens to be one of those very, very good moments, but didn't seem to go so well after that. Now, we don't know what's going to happen here for 2020 and beyond, but I just think that it should be something we should keep on the back of our minds. At the bottom here, you could see August up until November 27th is this period. And I want to see where this goes. I'm really interested to see how far they can push this 
bubble. I mean, we are now in a market where QE4 has just begun. So what is stopping it from going much, much higher? That will be interesting to say the least. I don't know how far they can get it without creating a massive, massive problem. So of course, I'll bring you the news. The Federal Reserve's ongoing efforts to shore up the short-term repo lending markets have begun to rattle some market experts. Here in this paragraph, they just mentioned the fact that they've spent billions of dollars to keep this going. But as the Fed's interventions have entered a third month, concerns about the market's dependence on its daily doses of liquidity have grown. The big picture answer is that the repo market is broken. Interesting because what we've had here is a reliance, an absolute reliance, and as as they say in this case here, medicating the markets into submission is not a long-term solution. We've had these problems extend now nearly three months at this point from September into December and there's no stopping it. Doesn't look like it's going to be able to be weaned off at any point in the near future. The demand is still very, very high. Even though initially we were told this would be short term, the market has largely ignored this. They've completely forgotten about the repo situation altogether. How much Fed support is needed to calm the repo market? Here you'll see a breakdown, three different things. The blue area is the total overnight repo supplied by the Fed. The orange is the total term repo supplied. And the T-bills purchased is the red area at the bottom. And I found it to be interesting that there is $106 billion in T-bills purchased by the Fed already. We were told this isn't QE4. We were told it's not affecting these interest rates. We are just taking care of the repo markets. We're just doing this all short term. You know, anybody who believes these lies... There's great, great fairy tales out there that are just historically so fantastic. I mean, Disney has a whole bunch of them, and I think they're probably much better and, uh, you know, great characters and animations and everything that are probably more suited. A sharp turn for global central banks. This is the Central Bank Diffusion Index, just showing you basically that central banks have moved from what they call hawkish to dovish, essentially saying that central banks are moving in this trajectory of making it very, very easy. The easy monetary policies will persist for the foreseeable future. Now, looking at the stock market, looking at equities, we've seen a lot of money moving out up until this point, but the last bit of data that I received showed that money is moving back into equities equities as soon as QE4 began. But this here tells you something very different than what the mainstream reports. Buying the 10 most underweight stocks and selling the 10 most overweight stocks by active funds has generated alpha in the past years with the exception of 2017. Take a look. If you see it, how can this possibly be? When they tell you over and over and over again what has happened with the markets, they're just always going up. It's fantastic. That really isn't the case. And this just happens to show you that what the mainstream view is doesn't actually work in practicality. Private payrolls growth tumbles in November as jobs market is losing its shine. Private payrolls increased by just 67,000 in November. They expected 150,000. We'll see what actually happens when we get the revisions out later. I'm interested to see how that data really impacts the markets. Usually it doesn't at all or maybe for a day or two and then everything's all fine again. Just a couple more points on that. You can see in the first paragraph, manufacturers, commodity producers, and retailers are shedding jobs. Job openings are declining. And if job growth slows any further, unemployment will increase. And what I have seen previously from the data that I have pulled up, shown you here on the channel before, of course, is that the unemployment rate needs to tick up just a very small amount. As soon as it comes up just a small amount, historically, Historically, that is a signal that it will spike higher. It does not come up in these, you know, relatively small amounts and then go back down. It is usually, for the most part, coming down or going up. There really isn't an in-between. Sure, you get bumps along the way, but that's the general direction. So I, I am definitely paying very close attention to what we're seeing with the unemployment rate, even the fake U3 unemployment rate. That's for sure, just because of the historical trends that go along with it. 
Really quickly, you can see the ADP breakdown that they give you, just showing you that natural resources and mining, manufacturing and construction, all losing the jobs. Where were they added? Obviously, everybody's favorite, education, and specifically healthcare. The healthcare ones being primarily around home care. Those individuals making, on average, I think the number was $24,000 a year, or maybe $28,000. I did a video about that previously. And leisure and hospitality are all always jobs that are in and out, in and out. People are constantly being hired in there. There's no doubt about that. The trouble is that the actual pay is extremely low. Then you have the ADP, ADP employment change. Just looking at the 12 month average, this has been sinking, not doing so well. In fact, over the last year, the you know the, the strength is, is definitely gone from it, lost its shine as they say, but that can turn around. If the government puts in some sort of stimulus package and maybe they start hiring hundreds of thousands of people every single month, maybe that will get it going again. But of course, the deficits are absolutely massive. The debt is never to be paid off again. And the central banks are building up a frightening amount on their balance sheet. This just shows you the difference between the ADP National Employment Report comparing the goods producing and the services producing. Now you could see the goods producing producing not looking very strong right here right now it's in the negative for the most part quite frequently in 2019 however the services side are doing well they tend to be lower paying jobs it all depends of course i've shown you the breakdown in previous videos change in non-farm private employment by selected industry, construction, natural resources, and mining and manufacturing all down. You can go down the list, see for yourself. It's just another breakdown to give you an idea of what's going on change in non-farm private employment by company size. This gives you the breakdown here, just showing you that the smallest companies between one and 19 employees have not done very well in November. This has been a trend. And what they say is that small companies are a bellwether. That trend has been continuing. That is definitely not a good sign. That's all for this video. If you found that informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, it really supports the channel, so I do appreciate it very much. If you want to build a business, if you want to learn about passive income and e-commerce and everything else to do with the subject, I created a free e-course. This e-course is going to teach you step-by-step -step everything you need, all for free, the AmazonGPS.com. If you want to learn about the financial industry, you don't know where to start. These two books have everything you need. I broke it down so simply, no jargon. It's extremely simple to get the knowledge you need. Check the link out in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. Wait a second, hang on, don't go anywhere. Have you seen this video? If not, definitely, absolutely watch it and I'll see you there.